got it's the same plastic I use when I roll the drum in Arthur's body, and it's 1.2 mil flexible plastic uh, PVC almost. So let's get started. Alright, so what I've done is I've marked out the uh, the radar eye on uh, a piece of flexible plastic. This is the old template for the uh, the leg template. And this stuff is pretty flexible but it's stiff so it's easy to work with it's about a mil and a bit thick you can bend it you can't bend it at right angles but you can put a curve into it things like that um, and it's nice and stiff and easy to work with it's easy to trim it's easy to cut with you can cut it with scissors um, and it's easy to run a hole saw through for the hole which is here there's a center mark there I don't know if you can see that faint line there but basically this template how I've marked it is how uh, it'll be so this is the middle piece these are the side pieces and they go where I've marked it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a photo of this but just want to let you know that that whole size for a 400mm dome because that's what my dome is is 68 millimeters. so if you take a photo of this or if I take it I'm going to take a photo of this if you print it out and then enlarge your print to make sure that your whole size is 68 centimeters, the rest of the template will be perfect okay It'll fit. You'll do some fine trimming around the edges when you're fitting it to your dome, but it'll be pretty close. Um, if you have a 450 millimeter dome, which is a standard dome that uh, you're supposed to use, I couldn't get hold of one, then that whole center would be 75 mil or three inches, or just under three inches.
is acting like a hinge. So if I get in there, you can see it's all sitting pretty good inside there. Okay. When you get down to this bit here, you can have that piece there, and you can have another piece here like this. Right? And there'll be a gap there. Don't worry about the gap yet. But make sure that that's inside there. And if that looks like it's too long, just here, then trim it back now while you can, just so it meets the edge of this corner here. Because what's going to happen is later on you're going to put a piece in like that. Just glue it in once you've got the rest of it in place. So it'll just save you a bit of hassle now. Uh, if it's a bit long, it's going to make it a bit more difficult. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put, you're going to grab the ends here and you're going to want to squeeze and make sure that this piece here, that point of this piece and the point of that piece touch along here and then put some tape over it and hold it in place. Because if you have it open, that curve won't match. It's still going to need a little bit of trimming, but it'll get you closer. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark 15 millimeters around this uh, edge of this ring. Then I do a thing called finger gauging. I've shown you this before, but basically you go the back finger here and you run on the edge. You put the, the lead off the mark, and then you just run your fingers around like that. As long as you don't move your hands, or your fingers, the line stays nice and straight. As you see when I get around the other side, if I did it right, it should line up with my original mark. There you go. I'm going to cut that out with a hacksaw. And when you cut it with a hacksaw, don't cut all the way through like that, because your hacksaw will wander, because this is perspex. So cut through the thickness, turn it, cut through the thickness, turn it, cut through the thickness. That way your line will stay straight and it'll be perfect all the way around, because you want that as flat as you could possibly get it. Of course, once you've sanded it, you'll... That on the sandpaper, you have a nice, perfect, perfectly straight ring that goes around like that. How this is going to go, that's going to go inside here, like that. See that? That'll fit beautifully. And you don't want it too long because it'll foul on the dome itself. So you want to make that as, you know, 15 millimeters as long, long as you want to go. And then what will happen is this eye here will go on the inside like that. lens eye inside there. And you want to cut it a bit on the outside of the line and give yourself a bit of room to, to run some glue around here later on around the outside. So 
you don't want to make it too small, so feel free to make it a bit larger if you want. That's the eye lens now, it's been sanded up. There's a slight seam in here, so I'm hoping to fill that with the putty. So I'll give it one or two coats of this before I hit it with a better, the better paint. This glue is a plastic bond, it's like, uh, it's good for this kind of stuff. It's a really good fit. making is this piece here. So you want to get yourself a piece of wood, cut it, this is an off cut but I'm going to use it, it's a bit of ply, cut it about uh, so it's a little bit less than the thickness of this whole measurement. I'm going to take, I'm going to have this template on uh, down below in the link so you can click on this or go to our Facebook page and get it, this will give you an idea of how to make this. But we're making the piece that's underneath the outside pieces so this piece will be up against the side like so that we're going to shape it to fit where it needs to go and then we're going to put bits of plastic over it to give it those ribbed look along there. Okay the piece looks like this. It's got a beveled edge up top. It follows the curve of the dome which you get from the curve of the side here like that. It's got a square at the bottom. So it fits on there like so. Run a little bit shorter than here plastic pieces over the top to give it the ribs that it needs and then you glue it all together.
basically goes across the top. And then you can pretty much glue them on. I do recommend when you cut the pieces to go down the side here. You cut a piece of plastic that matches that curve first and then you cut you cut it off in sections to match the pieces on the top. So that way your curve will be done before you have to try and make it fit later. See how I made pieces like that. Right, I've just marked it dot dot two dots and two dots just so I know which piece goes where. And then we've got this piece like this as well, which goes on the top. So just glue them all together and then we'll make the piece for the top. on top of the screwdriver so it doesn't stick to anything underneath and let it dry. While it's off drying, I'm going to cut the groove in the eye. Okay, now we've got our eye. We'll take a template, which you're going to get from our Facebook page. I'll put the link in the description below. I want to point out too with the template that if you blow up this template when you print it to the size that this hole here is 68 millimeters, perfect template for a 400 millimeter dome. Uh, if you've got a bigger dome than that, you'll have to work out what the difference will be. But basically, if you blow up the, part of the picture to make sure that when you print it out that that circle is 68 millimeters across, then your rest will be fine. Once you put your template on here like this, we just mark a start point. Once you have your start and your end point, you just get a ruler and draw a line across. Now how I marked out the skin on the uh, on the body was like for grooves and stuff, so I've got a soldering iron and just melted it along that line. It's probably the easiest and safest way to do it. You could use a, uh, a Dremel, but if you slip, you're going to put a groove in it and then you have to fill it and do it again. The soldering iron needs a bit more control. Soldering iron, hopefully what I've done is I've dull the end a little bit so it makes the, the um, this is hot by the way, I've, got, I've dulled the end like we've got a grinder on took the, the point off so it makes a wider cut. Get a metal ruler because if you use anything but that you're going to melt it. And then just hopefully it's hot enough we just start there. Once you've sanded everywhere, and I mean everywhere, so you want to basically get all the shape right. It doesn't matter if you've got grooves and stuff in it because we're going to fill those, but at the moment, you just want to get your shapes right and take all the shine off the plastic. You don't want any shine in there at all. Before you glue it on, this is the piece glued and dried. You need to do exactly to this what we did to that. So get your trimmer out and smooth your edges over and make sure it all sorts all nice and all the gaps are good and all that kind of stuff. It's going to go. Once you've finished it, it's all glued on. You need to go over the grooves and all the marks with some putty. The putty I use actually is a wood putty. This is what I use. No more cracks. Sally's no more cracks. Now it's for interior use, but which is fine because we're going to paint over it anyway. The bonus about this wood putty is that even though it's made for wood, it's nailable, sandable, and nailable. So if you can get a wood putty that you can nail without it cracking, then you know it's going to be good enough for whatever you're going to need it for. Now 
But while the other piece dries, I've uh, even though I hit this spray putty before, this is the, the eye that goes inside the, um, the radar eye. I've got a seam on here, so I've put some putty over there on the seam, and I'm going to sand it off. Hit this with spray putty again, and then uh, after the spray putty has been sanded back, we'll be ready to paint this one gloss black. What I'm using is a uh, one step primer putty, it's an automotive putty. So it's for cars, which is perfect for what we're doing here. I don't want to get any runs in it. Now that all the putty's dry, or the, uh, the, the fill is dry, we're going to sand all that off with 120 grit, and then we're going to go over it with some spray putty and then sand it off. Well, here we have it. It's looking pretty good. I've got a divot there, I might sand that out. I need a bit of spray putty now. I'm starting to get there. Now we're going to sand the dome part with 220 grit sandpaper. So it's really smooth and we're going to paint that black. Oh, that's all done. It's very, very smooth. It's looking good. Now to paint. It's looking pretty good now. So what you want to do is you want to sand it with 240 grit paper or even 320 grit paper. I've got a little bit of a rise here which I'll try and sand out but basically you want to sand the putty back so there's no shine. You see there's a slight shine on it. You want to take that all the way back. Okay. Alright, now it's really really hard to get the right blue for R2. Uh, I've searched everywhere and I don't want to go through the three painting process that you seem to find online where you've got these three different colours. I couldn't find all those colours anyway in Australia. So what I've done is I've found a colour that's so close to the right blue um, and it's called Passionate Blue and it's a gloss paint from Duolux. It's a Duramax uh, paint so it's really really good quality. Uh, it's about $12 a can but the only problem is it's not metallic which R2's blue is so I made a decision could I live with it and I decided that I could for the sake of the price. So here we go, I'm going to paint the eye with uh, this, this paint and see how it looks. Okay, what we're going to do now is now we've got our piece made. There's a bit of a repair I have to do here later, but anyway, we're going to flip it over down here like this. We're going to get some super glue, which is good for this type of plastic. We're just going to put little beads of it around this edge here, and then we're going to turn that over and put that on top. Now, the reason we're using super glue is I don't want any glue spilling into the other side, the side that's visible. Um, we're going to so this will be there to hold it and then we're going to put some of this thicker glue around the outside later on to cover up any gaps for light that get through. But that's just going to be basically just stopping the light coming through. Now that we have a couple of spots where it's been super glued, so it doesn't 
fall off. We're just gonna use this glue here. This, this is the same glue we used from in there, which is like, it's called Maxi Nails. It sticks to most anything really, and it bonds really well, really well. It takes a long time to dry. But the good thing is it's thick. So we can spread it around here on this edge and not have to worry about it seeping through. So that's what we're gonna do now. You basically just wanna just spread it around like this. Just so when it dries, it creates a bond between the outside and the, and the lens. Well, there you have it. One radar light. Come up the tree. Right, if you like this video, feel free to share it around, and I'll see you for the next one.